we must commence our examination of the respiratory system at the nose, the gateway to the system. We usually think of the nose's ability to detect smells, yet it has another important function. The nose makes the air we breathe suitable for the lungs. It possesses a marvelous aerodynamic design. It works like a perfect air conditioning unit and its interior is equipped with special filters. The curled structure of the nose allows the air to move around inside it. The air is thus warmed and moistened by the nasal mucus. The hairs inside the nose work like an air filter. Some 20 billion foreign bodies, such as dust, bacteria, and pollen, are trapped by these hairs in the nostrils. Those harmful particles which get past these obstacles are caught by a second defense mechanism, the secretion known as mucus. The upper respiratory tract and windpipe are covered in a viscous, slippery substance called mucus. This keeps the air passages moist. It also stops harmful substances from reaching the lungs. Mucus is assisted by the cilia. Each one of these is a mobile propellant and carries the mucus with the foreign body stuck in it to the pharynx. Here they are swallowed together with the foreign bodies as a result of the swallowing reflex and are then destroyed by the stomach acid. Alternatively, these foreign bodies may be expelled by coughing. A violent <coughs> cough can reach speeds of up to 960 kilometers or 600 miles an hour. This is one of the pieces of evidence that serious precautions have been taken to protect the respiratory system. There is another point here that needs to be considered. The cilia in the nasal passage carry the mucus upward. The cilia in the upper respiratory tract, on the other hand, move in a downward direction. In both regions, foreign bodies are carried towards the pharynx. The billions of cilia in both different regions literally know where the pharynx lies. Close inspection reveals a most important miracle here. Cilia are minute structures with no ears, eyes or brain. So how is it that these blind, deaf structures know the location of the pharynx? All the billions of cilia move together in the same direction. Who teaches the cilia that they all need to move as one in the same direction? Let us consider just one of these cilia. It is a living thing. Ever since it came into the world and throughout its life, it has just one function. It performs that one function without rest or protest. It carries the mucus layer to the pharynx. It is Almighty God who has created man in the finest form who gives them this duty. These miraculous structures perform the function God has given them and work day and night to protect your lungs from foreign bodies. Close examination of the structure of the cilia makes the scale of the miracle even clearer. 
Under the microscope, the cilia resemble simple tiny hairs, but they are actually a marvel of design and engineering. And they possess a complexity that those circles who defend the theory of evolution can never hope to explain. Nine different protein chains have been brought together in such a way as to form a cylinder. The two protein chains in the middle are the system's central motion generator. The proteins dynine and nexine set out among the protein chains represent the engines necessary for movement. Thanks to this complex system, which scientists have still to fully reveal, the cilia move at the high speed of 20 beats a second. The design in the cilia cannot be accounted for in terms of evolution because the system only works if all its components are fully present. It is impossible for it to have developed in stages. In other words, for it to have evolved. There is another point which should not be forgotten. Cilia serve no purpose on their own. They need to work together with the mucus layer in order to protect human life and prevent the entry of foreign bodies. Mucus also turns out to be a marvel of design when examined up close. The mucus layer is rather thin. On the screen you can see a 30 centimeter ruler. Now let us have a look at a 1 millimeter length of that ruler. Now let us divide that 1 millimeter part into 600. One six hundredth of a millimeter is so small a number that one cannot imagine it. That is the thickness of the mucus layer which protects your health. One six hundredth of a millimeter. Moreover, this thin layer consists of two separate sublayers. The bottom one is rather slippery. This enables the cilia to carry the mucus in a particular direction. The top layer, in other words the safety layer, is rather viscous, which allows it to trap harmful bodies. These two layers never get mixed up or change places. In order to better understand the perfection of the design in the system, let us imagine for a moment that the layers did change place. If the viscous layer were at the bottom, then the cilia would be unable to move and would stick where they were. If the slippery layer were on top, then dust and bacteria could easily reach the lungs without being caught by the mucus. In either event, the system would serve no purpose and human beings would catch diseases which eventually resulted in their deaths. This system has been functioning flawlessly since the first human beings came into existence. Darwinists claim that this system came into being by chance, stage by stage. Yet that is impossible. As we have just seen, the slightest irregularity or deficiency in the system would cause it to serve no purpose. This is an important piece of evidence invalidating Darwinism. The cilia, which serve you day and night, the mucal secretion with its own very special design, and the aerodynamic design inside the nose all go to prove one very important truth. God created you. The artistry and design evident in every part of your body are proofs of the might of God. In one verse, he states, We created you, so why do you not confirm the truth?